probabilistic approach to nuclear structure and nuclear data. And the more we know, the better we are. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you so much, Steve, for such a nice presentation. Always you bring something new to the, to the taste, how to measure lifetimes. Last time, last time was this problem with Sequoia 94, remember? Oh, uh, you can watch me. I should talk about that tomorrow. Huh? Excellent. So we have our own problems to worry about. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, the director, of the, the new director of the Demo Labs is torpedizing the taste a little bit today because most of the Demo Labs guys have to go to meet him in the afternoon. So he wants to let them know that, you know, the future, I don't know what they want. He wants to know the people there. So some of the, of the Demo Lab guys just left. So guys, I'm going to take a table now. <laughs> the corner there. Any questions for Steve? Sorry. Maybe? Um, this thing that you showed about the background problem, for this 136 xenon level beta decay experiment, they use like a time projection chamber and the tag on the variant. So this problem should probably be eliminated there, about the 2485 AV. Uh, you're right, because the liquid, liquid xenon is both a scintillator and a uh, ion chamber, okay? Um, but still, if, if you have this energy deposited, you can do tracking with it, okay? But I've, it's not clear to me yet that it's going to be, a, a, that you're going to eliminate the problem. The poor energy resolution, even if they get down to 25 kilovolts, is a real problem. And quite frankly, even if you have a neutron coming in and exciting a level in xenon-136, there is a finite probab probability that all of that excitation energy will stay in one pixel. We've done that, done a, a calculation, a geon calculation, and it can, it can happen. The probability is not large, but if you're trying to get down to a tenth of an event per ton year, that's, that's tough. I'm still thinking of if you know very well the branching ratio, you can probably estimate the level of contamination if you check the other bits. There, there may be other clever ways that you can get around this, you know, but I think exposing the problem is one of the things yes. that you need to do. My question went back to your uh, plot of the Demo Lab and why the half-lives change uh, when you have electron conversion. Is that what you said? Oh, that's what Paul said. <laughs> <laughs> um, because it's just an alternate decay mode. Yeah. Because he said? Because the cross the probability of the conversion electron goes up as the uh, as the energy of the transition goes down, so uh, that's why they, it takes up more and more of the, uh, of the lifetime, basically. Yeah, internal conversion coefficients are largest for high Z, mm -hmm. low energy. Mm -hmm. That's just what this, uh, this shows. As you go to higher Z, the conversion electron contribution to the, uh, to the decay is increasing, and you go to uh, lower energy. So it's really just what you would expect. In fact, I think these are just calculated curves in the experiment, but they, we know those things pretty well. Well, you usually put them in by hand, don't you? If you can be bothered. No, no, you don't do it by hand anymore, John. Do you like any questions? You are designing this chamber for the lifetime program here, DWC? I think my questions will be good tomorrow. Okay, <laughs> so lifetime. Yeah. Do you bother about neutron scattering? I mean, you have your collimators, but neutrons scatter everywhere. What she says is exactly right, because neutrons scatter everywhere. You cannot do very much about that. Let me just... Uh... So you have an old Manhattan type of uh, Van de Graaff, don't you, where you, uh, there was neutron scattering, there was lots of... So you probably well, uh, a big hole in the ground or something? Yeah. A big hole in the ground. we do have. The point we have in, uh, in uh, Tampa, where they worked on the South African bomb because they were a bunch of bastards. 
Let me just point out that no the, uh, we've got a massive amount of shielding here. Uh, we, we surround the detector by bismuth uh, germany, and it's a rather large shield, which is not only a confidence suppressor, but it's also an active shield for radiation coming from the side. And John is exactly right. If you look at this floor, the, the floor goes down over two meters before you... Uh, okay, that looks like one yeah, this is, this is a scattering pit. And so it's the, the, uh, the floor covering